Hello and welcome to the Killick & Co market update. US inflation has risen to a 13-year high of 5.4%. Here's a 10-year chart where you can clearly see that recent spike in the inflation rate. Energy prices are certainly a significant factor behind this. Oil, for example, is still a very significant input into many products and processes within the economy, and a rise in the price of oil, as we've seen in the last year, will generally cause inflation. However, there certainly are many other factors at stake. For example, lots of businesses are talking about finding it very difficult to recruit staff at the moment, and that's leading them to put up wages to try and attract those staff, and that is also likely to lead to inflation. We're also seeing a mismatch between supply and demand. This chart here shows factory orders versus manufacturing outputs for the US and Germany. So in the green we've got the US and this data goes back to February 2020. So the solid green line shows factory orders which can be taken to represent demand. You can see demand fell very heavily during the first lockdown but since then it has recovered very strongly and it's now above where it was before the pandemic. Manufacturing output, on the other hand, can be taken to represent supply. That didn't fall quite so much during the first lockdown, but it has recovered much more slowly and it's still below where it was before the pandemic. So we've had a big rise in demand and not such a large rise in supply, and therefore that is leading to inflation. Central banks around the world are still saying they think this inflation is transitory or temporary, but over the last couple of weeks we're certainly hearing more talk of interest rates going up sooner rather than later in order to get this inflation under control. We can look at how bond markets are being traded to give us an idea of how investors expect interest rates to move in the near future. And at the moment, if we look at US bond markets, it seems there is a 35% chance of interest rates going up by 0.25% before July 2022. One sector that has historically benefited from higher interest rates is the banking sector, because if interest rates go up, that means that banks can charge more on their loans. Here's the share price chart for JP Morgan, and you can see that the share price is currently above where it was before the pandemic, so that implies that investors are feeling relatively comfortable with the future prospects for JP Morgan at the moment. Banking prospects also clearly depend on the state of the wider economy, so if the JP Morgan share price is up, that also implies that investors are feeling fairly comfortable about the state of the economy at the moment. JP Morgan actually published results this week, which came in ahead of expectations in terms of earnings, largely because of high levels of investment banking fees, reason being there have been lots of mergers and acquisitions recently. Interest income from loans was actually quite disappointing, firstly because interest rates are low, but also the number of loans was relatively low in comparison to expectations. So we'll be watching that loan data very closely over the next few months to see where it goes from here. Recent data has shown that the NHS waiting list has hit a record high, with more than 5.7 million patients currently waiting for treatments. There's also been a notable increase in the numbers of patients waiting more than 18 weeks and more than one year for their treatments, as you can see by the yellow and the red areas on this graph. Recently, there's been talk of what could potentially be done to start bringing these waiting lists down, and one area that has been discussed is robot-assisted surgery. Although the machines for this are very costly, there are some clear benefits. For example, there is less toll on the surgeon because the surgeon would simply control the, the robot using a console instead of performing the operation themselves. Robot-assisted surgeries are also generally minimally invasive, which means there's generally much less recovery time for the patient, they can leave hospital more quickly, and that frees up a hospital bed for additional patients. The current market leader in robot-assisted surgery is a company called Intuitive Surgical, and as you can see by this five-year chart, the shares have recently performed well. So do give us a call if you would like to talk about this company in more detail. Moving on to have a look at next week, it's a big one for healthcare. We've got results expected out from Intuitive Surgical, Abbott Laboratories and Danaher. That's it from us. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.